We're on the air. We're here. We're live. We're live, live, live. How you guys doing? Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to the show. It is Wednesday, May 30th, 2018. How's it going, you guys? Uh, welcome to my uh, to my broadcast. I'm just scrambling here to get things set up. I was uh, just in the middle of making a video, uh, which I'm going to upload later today. We're going to talk about the history of the Cunard Cruise Line. going to have a little, little feature on the Cunard Cruise Line. And I'll uh, load that up after the show is over, and uh, you'll see you can see that tonight if you like. How are you guys doing? Uh, thanks again for joining me on my live stream. Uh, just making sure everything is looking okay. I think the picture looks pretty good. I hope the sound's okay today. Hope you're getting me uh, getting a good reception on that. You can let me know. Um, I don't know until you guys tell me. So uh, we had a terrible connection yesterday. I contacted my cable provider and uh, my internet people and told them what was going on. It was, they 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 repaired it online. It's just unbelievable. They hit some buttons, and the next thing you know, within 15 minutes, I'm up to like unbelievable speed. It's all great. So uh, it looks good. I think my picture looks pretty good to you guys right now. I hope you're getting a good signal. Uh, please let me know if you can, and uh, and uh, hopefully you're hearing me okay and all as well. Uh, the channel and developments. Oh my goodness, uh, I've just been so busy here. Um, those of you who are regulars. Um, Welcome back. By the way, those of you who are brand new, have never been here before, welcome to my channel. I'm in, I'm in Creston, British Columbia, Canada, just north of three, mile, three, three miles north of the U.S. border, uh, Idaho. I'm in Canada here, British Columbia. Um, gorgeous day. Uh, we're going to hit about 68, 70 degrees today. Not too hot, but just perfect. Um, but those of you who are regulars and those of you who aren't, uh, uh, I'm like a, a bunch of other YouTubers out there struggling to get by. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm trying to to build my channel on a zillion levels. Uh, trying to find new viewers, trying to get new subscribers, grow the channel, which is happening. Uh, try to uh, keep you entertained, uh, which I hope I am. Uh, and I'm trying to make a living all at the same time. And so I'm juggling like 16 balls here. I got my YouTube channel going. I got my Facebook going. And I got Instagram going. I've got uh, I've got Twitter, uh, Pinterest, Patreon. I have my own uh, online store selling my own merch. Uh, you can check that out, Redbubble. Uh, folks are sending me donations from time to time, uh, which I deeply, deeply appreciate uh, now that it's month end. Um, folks are sending me Patreon, uh, sorry, folks are sending me Patreon pledges. They are sending me super chat donations while I'm on the air from time to time. And the, uh, the creme de la creme is they're sending me uh, donations through uh, PayPal. Uh, because I have a link up here on my homepage. There's a bunch of buttons up there. PayPal is one of them. If you go over there, it'll, a little donate thing will come up. And folks are sending me donations from time to time. And I thank you very much for those. Those are invaluable. Anyway, yesterday was another event in the history of this channel. I launched my very own affiliate marketing program with Amazon, Amazon.com. So on every video that I am making now, um, and a few that I've made already, I've kind of put the links in there. I'm putting the link on my channel for any of you folks who want to support me. If you're an Amazon shopper already, um, you can help fund my channel by just continuing to shop on Amazon, but do it through my affiliate link here on this channel. And so tonight, after once I finish this telecast, on the description below, there will be the link. If you uh, go to yesterday's show, uh, the, either one, the uh, the trivia show last night or the one at 5 o'clock, uh, the link is there. And I've had a couple of you do that, and I want to thank you guys. Um, I've had a couple of you go through there and take a peek, and I had uh, one of my uh, viewers send me an email last night saying, I went and linked into Amazon, and I bought something. Check your stats and let me know if it's working. So this morning I got up and... I went to my Amazon uh, uh, affiliate page that I've just, you know, had created. And, of course, I'm such a newbie. I have no idea where I'm looking. I'm trying to figure out where to go. And, oh, reports. I go to reports and then trying to figure out where, what's the activity. And I find yesterday's activity level. And now I'm trying to figure out what does it mean. <laughs> it's one thing to see a report. What does a report mean? And, uh, anyway, I, after a little while and I bunch of sips of coffee because I had to wake up. I figured out that, okay, I saw how many clicks there are on the affiliate links and uh, there was a purchase and it, it showed the purchase, but it hadn't been shipped yet. So I hadn't earned any 
fees, any commissions or anything like that yet. But that's because it hadn't been shipped yet. So I put two and two together and went, all right, well, I got the email last night at my time. So it was very late in the evening, Eastern time. So obviously the shipment will be done sometime likely today. And then probably tonight I'll get a report that this item was sent and then I'll probably see the thing. So I contacted my viewer. I said, okay, okay, I found your order. I found it. It doesn't tell me any names or anything. It just he described to me what he purchased, so I found the item that he purchased. All right, I know what you purchased. It's been purchased officially, and now we're just waiting for it to be packed and shipped, and, uh, and then we'll see what's going on. So I'm crossing my fingers that my first Amazon affiliate sale has gone through and that it will ship and that I will earn uh, some commissions on my first ever order. And I thank all of you who um, uh, have uh, tolerated me. Uh, <laughs> Trying to explain to you, how I'm building this channel, uh, and any of you who are uh, who are so inclined to please go to my Amazon link and link in, you'll be linked into the home page of Amazon. Now, for my Canadian viewers, I want to give you a heads up. I've been trying to figure out how to help you guys, and I I think I figured it out. Uh, you just go to the link that I've given you. The, the link that's there, just go to that link. It'll take you to Amazon.com. But from the Amazon.com link, you can link into Amazon CA and you can just shop there. Now, will I be paid on any Amazon Canada orders? I don't know. It's all new to me. So if any of you are in Canada who are, who are picking something up in the next day or two, if you can send me a message uh, either through my, uh, through my email, which is also on the description below, uh, just send me an email. Say, Bruce, I bought uh, you know something for five bucks or whatever it was, uh, whatever, just describe the item. Uh, keep an eye open. I will then keep an eye open to see if the Canadian orders also come through the affiliate links. I think they will, um, but uh, we'll see what happens. So it's all, it's just all a whole new learning curve. So today I've been busy taking these links, um, uh, adding links to my Twitter handle and also my Facebook page because I found a beautiful power bar. The, the kind that you plug in your appliances, uh, like uh, your, your camera, your computer, if you're going on a cruise. Also, it had the USB ports, but it doesn't have a search protector, so it's allowed on a cruise ship. So I found one of those, one of the best sellers on Amazon, posted that on Twitter and Facebook with a link for that item. Uh, and then I posted a link for those uh, those clothes hangers, those hangers, those oversized clothes hangers that you use to keep your towels on your uh, deck chairs. Uh, I've got a link for those also on my Twitter and my uh, on my Facebook page. And then I added, uh, oh, I added another uh, unit. Was It's a holder for your cell phone. Your entire cell phone uh, goes inside a snap-tight plastic unit and uh, protects it from sand, water, uh, dust, and debris. So if you're going to the beach with your, with your smartphone or if you're on a cruise and you're going on shore, uh, you can wear it with a lanyard and uh, you'll protect your phone. And so I put these, I'm, I'm really experimenting, just, just bear with me. I'm experimenting here with these links to see if anything happens to them. I'll know in the next 24 hours if anything happened with any of these links whatsoever. And uh, eventually I will make a, a video for uh, items you must have on a cruise ship, uh, for, especially for newbies. And I will feature and highlight a number of these items with the links on my description. And I try to become like a lot of other YouTubers out there with the affiliate marketing system and get it up and going and uh, that'll hopefully be another uh, income ge generator for us uh here at the traveling with bruce uh by the way uh it doesn't matter what you buy on amazon if you if you link into any item that i'm you know promoting and you don't buy the item doesn't matter uh, if you buy another item instead like you, you buy some potato chips <laughs> you buy uh you buy a camera you buy uh you buy a, a shovel for your garden i don't care i get a I get a finder's fee for anything you buy in the first 24 hours that you link into my link. So if you're in the habit of watching Traveling with Bruce during the day and then in the evening you decide you want to go shopping on Amazon, well, just go from this video right here, click into my link into Amazon and then just head on over there and shop until you drop and uh, you're supporting my channel and I thank you very much. Okay, that's, I'm trying to say this as quick as I can and as concisely as I can without it uh, being too jumbled and uh, hopefully not making too many of you angry because <laughs> I don't want to make you mad. On the channel, by the way, um, we were at 2,084 subscribers yesterday. Um, right now, 2,096. We're going to hit 2,100 tonight. This is fantastic. We just hit 2,000 a week and a half ago. Now we're going for 2,100. This is great. The channel just keeps growing on. 
I love it. My topic today is uh, ships that are being refurbished. Uh, a whole bunch of them I've written up here on a number of the cruise lines. We're going to talk about that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll compare some notes. Also, I'm here to answer any questions you have about cruising, uh, th especially those of you who are new. Uh, anybody here who's, who's by, please come by and say hi. Tell me, where are you? What's your high temperature today? I'll, I'll say hi back to you. I'm going to say, talk right now to everybody that's already signed in. Greet them all and uh, let everybody know how it's going. Uh, thanks, by the way, for anyone who's giving me a thumbs up today. Uh, again, I hope the signal's nice and clean. It looks clean on my phone. It looks very clean on my computer, I think. I've got 12 thumbs up so far. Uh, anyone can throw me a thumbs up today. That would be great. It helps with the analytics at YouTube. Tells the channel gurus, promote this guy. He's got all kinds of thumbs up. Promote him. He should, should expose this guy. Pamela Jordan signed in first. Uh, hi, Bruce and everyone. Cloudy and 80 Fahrenheit here in Iva, South Carolina. Pamela, welcome back. One of my originals. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Richard C. Rainey, 68 at the beach. Uh, gosh, that's that's not fun. But, you know. You're at the beach. Uh, uh, Charles Jordan, uh, good evening, everybody. How you doing, Charles? Tracy Dunlop is here, too. Uh, hi, everyone. Lots of rain over uh, overnight and this morning over two inches. Uh, by noon, the sun started coming out, and now 89 Fahrenheit and sunny in Naples evaporate that stuff. Get rid of it. Oh, my goodness. Tracy, hope your weather is turning nicely now. Peter Heckham, a Bruce, very nice here in Tarpon Springs. Wow, we had rain all morning. This is the reverse of the usual summer weather pattern. Usually it rains here in the summer at around 4 p.m. I think you're, you're getting the tail end of that uh, uh, tropical system or, you know, kind of what's left of it. Hopefully it's all done for, Peter. Uh, Tracy Dunlap uh, looks good today. Pamela Jordan looks good today. That's the signal. Thank you, guys. I'm glad to hear this. Wes Morrison, hello, everybody. It's now 100 degrees here in New Braunfels, Texas. And we know it's going to get warmer in New Braunfels uh, uh, as well, Wes. Thanks again, Wes, uh, the other night. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, last night on Trivia, uh, I had a question. It was the longest flights, nonstop flights out of Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. Which are the 10 longest flights out of Dallas-Fort Worth? And Wes Morrison sent me that uh, quiz, and I thank him very much, uh, Really appreciate it. Went over well. Everybody had a good time with it. It was a great. It was a great uh, cruise. Some interesting results uh, from the top ten. It's unbelievable how song how long some of these flights truly are. It's it's stunning. Peter Heckema, much better connection today. You even look younger. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, instead of sixty two, I'm sixty one and a half. Thanks, pal. I uh, love it. <laughs> Desi Wagner. Hi, Bruce and everyone working, but going to hang out looking good. Bruce, thanks, Desi, so much. Thanks for joining us and sneaking us in behind your boss. Charles Jordan, thumbs up. Scott Batchy. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Much better today. Another nice day here in Ventura, California. Desi Wagner, 85 and rainy on and off in Chicago. Love that town. Paul Wilgus. Hi, Bruce and all. It's 78 um, and uh, and. Uh, off and on rain here in Virginia. Your signal and picture is great today. Fantastic. I'm really happy with that. I'm, I'm hoping because I talked to those folks last night and they said, oh yeah, your numbers are terrible. Hey, I'm going to shut everything down on you. and We'll shut it all up. Half an hour later, it all came up and everything is wonderful. Debbie Emanuel is here. Hi, everyone. Cooler today in Northern California and forecast high of 85. Sorry, Bruce, did not get on Amazon yet, but going to when I get home tonight, whenever, uh, Debbie, whenever you want, 24-7, please just link into my uh, link. I'm coming to any one of my videos, at least the most re recent ones. You'll find the link and then go shopping on Amazon all you want, please. <laughs> Shop for friends. <laughs> tell your friends. That's right. Tell all your friends. Hey, I watch this guy on YouTube and he's just, you know, he's pathetic. But he needs all the help he can get. Would you mind using this link when you go on Amazon? Help Bruce out, you know. You don't have to watch them. Just shop with them. <laughs> oh, what a plug. Maurice is here. Why do they have a sharp container on cruise ships in the cabins, and what are they used for? Why do they have a sharp container on cruise ships in the cabins, and what are they used for? Um, boy, you got me. Uh, what What are you talking about? Uh, why do they have a sharp container? In the cruise, are you, are you talking? Is it the bathroom you're talking about? Is is there, is it underneath the sink? Uh, is that for razors from the old days? I don't. I'm I'm lost. Uh, Maurice, you got me here. Uh, this is a good trivia question. Thomas Henry, hi everybody. David Card is here boarding the Norwegian Star this Sunday. 
heard there was a lot done on dry dock. Can't wait. Yes, sir. That ship was uh, uh, seriously uh, renovated uh, and uh, put in dry dock. I think it was in Barcelona or Cadiz, Spain, something like that. Uh, David, let us know uh, when you can. How How is it going to come out? Uh, uh, and David, I don't recognize your name, so maybe you're brand new here. And if you are, welcome. If you're a returning guy, uh, then I apologize for not remembering because, you know, I'm old. You know. <laughs> but if you're new, welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, let us know how this cruise works out. Thomas Henry, uh, diabetic needles uh, for one, Maurice. Okay, uh, there's one. And uh, razor blades will be another one. Okay, I I, I guess that's what that's for. I'm assuming here. Uh, Paul Wilgus, Maurice, they are for safe disposal of needles like for diabetics. Debbie Manuel, Maurice, think it's for disposing needles safely. Palma Jordan, yay, David. I'm so jealous. Uh, Jim Thomas, hi all. 85 here in Anderson, California today. Hey, Bruce. New, new getting better, so yay. New, uh, a knee is getting better. Uh, the knee is getting better. I'm, he's got a typo there. Uh, good stuff. You had the operation about two weeks ago, going into physio, and uh, it's coming around. This is good stuff, Jim. Fantastic. The more you get up and around, the more you'll be able to get up and around. This is fantastic news. Way to go, pal. I'm glad to hear that. Thomas Henry, great for you, David. Let us know how you like the new star. Uh, David, everyone's wishing you well on this uh, cruise. Seakeeper, hi, Bruce, and all. 87 Fahrenheit and cloudy here in Tequista, South Florida. Enjoying the weather. I don't need sunshine to be happy. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, but you know, if it's not, we're happy anyway. Uh, welcome, my friend. It's great to have you back. Mary is here. Hi, all. Hi, Mary. Maurice. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure, guys. Thanks. Uh, Charles Jordan. Hey, Jim. It's only 80 here in Anderson, South Carolina right now. David Card, Anderson, South Carolina. In Lancaster, brother. <laughs> John B. Hi, Bruce. Northern New York is warm today, about 80. John B. How are you doing, John B.? Welcome back to the show. Uh, if it's your, I don't think it's your first time, but. Uh, you're kind of a recent joiner, and I'm welcoming you back. That's fantastic, sir. Uh, Thomas Henry, Bruce, which outlet does your multi-plug use? I have found on the Dawn and the Jewel class, the EU plug is best. Uh, well, on mine, on, on this plug that, that, that I was uh, promoting on uh, Twitter and Facebook, uh, it's just a North American three-pong plug. Uh, it's got, I think, a five-foot long extension cord, like a five-foot long cord. You plug it in, and then you can, you know, put that unit, you know, within five feet left or right of that plug to plug in your other uh, accessories. Check it out. At all the, the description is unbelievable. I, I'm just amazed. I, I checked it out myself just to, you know, see if the link worked. I clicked on the link. Took me to the Amazon site for this item. Page after page of information. Just unbelievable. And then all kinds of people who uh, commented on it who bought one, and there were just a lot of five-star ratings from a lot of people, uh, very few fours, and almost nothing below that. They love this unit. So I was pretty impressed with it from what I've seen. I haven't got one in my hand. I think I'm going to order one. Um, anyway, it sounds great. Um, let's see here. Charles Jordan. Hi, David. Uh, Thomas Henry. Uh, Bruce, the signal is great today. Fantastic. Lisa Moore is here. Hello, all. Lisa, how are you? Welcome back. Thomas Henry, 75 and cloudy in Richmond, Virginia. Paul Wilgus, see what happens when you pay your bill. They give you a good signal. Well, you know, we're getting behind again. <laughs> There's another one coming. <laughs> K Sib, it is for needles for diabetics. Thank you, K Sib. We've been thinking that. I I I just thought about the old, old days, about uh, you know, the old days when you had a razor blade that you, you know, changed out every two or three days. Um, but yeah, uh, that would make a ton of sense for the diabetics. Absolutely. Uh, cool jazz. Hi, Bruce. Nice day in New York City today. 73 stuck in my office, but I had to log on. Uh, cool jazz. I'm glad you're here. Uh, <laughs> you're not the only one who does this. Uh, I have a number of folks who uh, they, they kind of have to work a little bit during my show and they kind of watch from the office on the, you know, on the side there. They got it on. Uh, others are just uh, listening to the audio and trying to work away and uh, whatever. I welcome all of you, of course, uh, every time. I love it. Thank you so much for coming back. Uh, Maurice uh, uh, saying, Bruce, uh, have you ever experienced anything bad happening on your cruise, like a person going overboard? Uh, when I was on the Norwegian getaway two years ago, we picked up uh, Cuban refugees. Wow, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a bit scary. Uh, you know, I haven't experienced anything like an on- on ship uh, emergency, although I will say um, uh, was my last cruise it was last year on the uh, print, the Ruby Princess. Uh, we were in uh, Puerto Vallarta and uh, uh, we'd had a lovely day and we were supposed to leave at about, um, 
about five in the evening uh, was there was departure time. And that was just around sunset time. Um, and uh, it just so happened that uh, my my uh, my better half and I, Jen and I, were um, we were in the area of the uh, uh, we were in the lobby area, you know, the atrium of the ship, and we were down where the uh, where the uh, uh, the espresso counter was, where the, you know you get the nice coffees. And uh, um, you can grab a table at, at the at the espresso counter and have a seat, and then just look out the window, and you're only about five ten feet off the water surface typically. Well, anyway, uh, we were still in, in port, and um, I was thinking, geez, you know, we haven't, uh, we haven't pulled out yet. And so we, uh, we went over to the, we saw a bit of commotion, like we saw some people kind of peeking out the windows. So I wonder what we're looking at, because we're just in port. So I went over, and sure enough, uh, looked right out, and it just so happened that the, uh, the gangplank, the, 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 the one that we had left earlier on the day on for a little walk, is just below us. Uh, so we were, I guess we're on deck five or six, and this was deck four or five, okay? And um, a peep, uh, we noticed uh, there was an ambulance sitting on the, uh, on the, uh, the pier. And uh, uh, we noticed uh, um, uh, uh, one guy comes out, a paramedic comes out, and he's carrying uh, luggage. And I'm going, uh-oh, someone's getting off the ship here. And uh, he had uh, two pieces of luggage. And then behind him came... Uh, uh, one of the staff uh, crew members, and they had a carry-on and a small piece of luggage, and and they went to the back of the ambulance. They opened the doors, and and they were kind of loading that in to the on the one side. And then, like a minute or two later, we could see commotion from below. We looked down, out comes on the gangplank. Here comes the uh, paramedic with a with pulling a stretcher. Uh, the doctor, uh, you know, and a patient, uh, one of our passengers, and a gentleman, an elderly gentleman. And the wife uh, walking just behind, and they're uh, walking down the, plan, the, the, the gangway, and uh, they wheeled him over to the ambulance, and uh, they had brought the stretcher in from the ambulance on board, got him, and they were taking him to a hospital. And uh, uh, he was conscious and talking to, to the doctors, and uh, the wife was uh, nodding her head and listening to instructions and, and uh, figuring out what was going on. And I thought, oh, boy, you know, this is... Uh, what a mess because if you're from the u.s or from canada or from britain or you know wherever you're from you're certainly not from mexico you're here from somewhere else other than mexico and you got to go into the hospital uh, did he have a stroke or a heart attack we don't know I mean, it wasn't ever announced but it took about 20 minutes and we we're watching this kind of whole thing and i i thought well, this is interesting to see sort of firsthand sort of tragic but it is life, and um, and here he, here they went into the back of the ambulance, and uh, uh, slowly the ambulance uh, drove off, and they were admitting this gentleman to to a hospital. And I was crossing my fingers, hoping, geez, I hope they've got medical insurance or travel insurance. I hope they're you know they're okay because it's going to be costly. How are they going to get home? Uh, the hope is that he uh, that he recovers relatively quickly and he can fly home on his own with his wife rather than being taken home in an ambulance. Uh, you know, by jet, uh, that would be just unbelievably expensive. So anyway, that was the topic of discussion for the next hour or two amongst a lot of the folks who were watching this uh, from the various decks of the of the ship. But we didn't experience anything like, uh, you know, man overboard or, or that kind of an emergency. Um, haven't, haven't had anything like that happen on our, on our cruise at this point. Steam and Bean is here. Hey, everybody. Hey, Steamer. How are you doing there, pal? Nice to have you. Mary Ellen Shaw is here. Sharps? containers are for people to dispose of needles and syringes for medication and blood sugar testing thank you mary very mary very 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 much for that uh that is exactly what we've been speculating and now we know um that is fantastic mary ellen uh, welcome to the show if you've been here before welcome back if you've never been here welcome as a first timer i'm glad you're here steven bean did you see the refugees uh i'm sure i'm not sure who he's asking he's probably asking uh, who asked me that question wendy thompson hi everyone 96 in Blind, Missouri. Air, rental car, camper to stay in, dogs in the vets. Wow, we will be in Florida. We'll be Florida homeowners soon. <laughs> Wendy is counting the days. Fantastic, Wendy. Maurice, uh, but uh, no, but everyone was by the deck and the ship stopped. Okay, on the uh, because of the uh, refugee situation. Steaming Bean, cool shirt, Bruce. Oh, thank you, sir. One of my, one of my collection. Cool Jazz. I had a passenger suffer a heart attack during dinner. Ship went full speed ahead to Mexico, and there was a boat heading to us to pick them up offshore. We just spent the rest of the night anchored. Interesting, 
Very interesting. Steaming bean, tough to hear about people's health issues on holidays, unfortunately, bound to happen as many cruisers are old age. And the fact that you just have these huge numbers of people on a cruise ship, uh, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 people. That's a town, um, you know, medical issues, just it's a numbers game, I guess. And uh, yeah, every day, 6,000 people on a cruise ship, they're 6,000 days older every day that goes by. And um, sometimes they have an issue on board. Isn't that something? Um, <laughs> Wendy Thompson, we had a guy who was strong like Russian bear on a rainforest hike uh, that night we had to evac him off for a heart attack. Wow. He only over exerted himself. Isn't that something? Steamy bean. There's a wacky cruiser in his sixties going around selling shirts with his name on it. Give him distance. Uh, that's right. Look out. There's this guy wearing traveling with Bruce T's. Look out. Haven't been stopped yet on the street here in this tiny town. Anyone looking at me going, Hey, aren't you that guy that not in this town. Uh, so uh, we'll see when that happens. Peter Heckema, one of our cruises, we had a helicopter take off someone who had a heart attack. The ship never stopped, and the copter, chopper pilot copter pilot, kept hovering over the deck and finally hoisted the patient up. Great flying. Wow, that's unbelievable. Peter Heckema, buy evacuation insurance. Yeah, oh, for sure. Uh, you're looking at 30 to 50 grand, um, easy or more. It's It could be incredibly expensive and uh, entirely inconvenient for your bank account. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Uh, good points, everybody. Um, upcoming uh, ship refurbishments. Uh, some have happened, some are happening. Thought I'd mention those today. Um, lots of refurbishing going on to keep these ships running longer and uh, compete with the brand new ships coming out. Um, the uh, the Carnival Corporation, uh, they um, just finished remodeling Legend. Uh, Spirit is being done, and the Inspiration is going to be uh, refurbished November the 5th to the 15th. That's a 10-day refurbishment. So I'll run about 20, 30 million bucks, that one. If the ship is in for two weeks, you're looking at a cost of about 30 to $50 million. Unbelievable. Uh, if it's a month, it's a hundred million bucks. It's That's how much is being sunk into the vessel uh, because there are thousands of workers on the ship and or just by it or in factories around it to supply goods in to refurbish a ship. And uh, it's a race against, against the clock. Everything has to be done by military precision Certain things have to be done first, certain things have to be done in the middle, certain things have to be done at the end. You cannot do finish fine painting and lacquers uh, before you start blowing dust into the air from uh, from dusting off all kinds of uh, deck material and that kind of thing. So everything has to go in order to make it seamless and make it work. It's, it's an incredible uh, 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 dance, a, a ballet, actually, a performance to, uh, to uh, be involved in something like that. Absolutely complex. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what do we got here? Gregory Hartman. Hey, Bruce. How are you doing today? Glad I made it before taking off to watch game two. Right on, buddy. Uh, Steaming Bean looking at getting booked on 2020 Mexican Riviera on Carnival's new ship, the Panorama, I'm assuming. Uh, Maurice um, is here. Remember when the Anthem of the Seas went through the rough seas and they went back to Cape Liberty? Why didn't the cruise line know about that beforehand? Uh why didn't they know about the rough seas or anything like that? Well, there are times where uh, um, the cruise line knows all about a bad a bad storm. They do. Um, there's no you know no hiding it. You've got the radar systems. You've got the National Weather Service. You've got the marine weather, weather systems out there. Um, but there are cruise lines who uh, they also have a schedule. And uh, if they've got to get uh, 4,500 people to Miami on Sunday, and they got to get 4,500 people from Miami onto the sea on Sunday. The ship's going to get there. And uh, Saturday night, it's plowing through whatever it has to plow through to get to Miami. Now, if the seas are utterly impassable and it's, it's a dangerous situation, no, the cruise line will not make a run for Miami. They'll, they'll maybe head to stay out. They'll stay out at sea in the Bahamas area or they'll be down in uh, uh, towards uh, – uh, South of that area, perhaps uh, it all depends on where, where shelter is needed. They may even be straight east of Miami in the Atlantic and just going in circles, waiting for uh, the green light to, to, to make a run in. Uh, this past winter, we had an episode, and we've had one almost. It seems like almost every year we get one of these, where um, the uh, the uh, there's a cruise line, uh, the cruise ship has to get back to New York for whatever day uh, to offload its passengers from a nine or a 10 or 11 day cruise. And what's in the way is a winter storm. 
the winter storm is heading north, as is the cruise ship. Um, but the tolerance of the of the waves are well within the cruise ship's ability to handle it. The problem with cruise ships is that um, <clears throat> cruise ships are so uh, highly engineered today uh, that, especially in the last 30 years, that uh, cruise ships are designed to handle weather that we can't handle. The, the ship can handle a rough sea, but we can't handle the rough sea. And um, captains who've been on the sea for 20, 25 years who are in charge of these cruise ships, half of, you know, $700 million monster, uh, they got to get that ship back to port. And um, there are times where they will just plow right through a, uh, a winter storm and head into the port of New York. And unfortunately, the passengers are getting, you know, tossed around a lot and they don't like it. And uh, nowadays with social media, everybody sees it because everybody posts it. Um, the ship itself is never in danger, but the passengers are inconvenienced and uh, they don't like it very much. But the ship gets back on time. Passengers wobble their way off. And the new folks get on, and by the time the ship leaves, eight, ten hours later, the storm that they were battling has passed by, and they're moving on, and um, that happens. So here on this on this occasion here, it's very possible that the cruise line knew about the rough weather, but maybe they underestimated how rough it could get, or uh, the cruise line said it was rough, but the passenger said it was dire. And there's your differential between an experienced sea hand and those of us who don't know. You know, the first thing about being uh, sailors. We're just on board the ship, and we don't like the rocking movement uh, that we're experiencing. And the captain's going, this is what happens when you're at sea, and we got to get you home. I don't know. Uh, Maurice, I can't give you a better answer than that. Um, but that's a guess from this guy. Uh, Steamy Bean, I'm on Anthem for July 2019. Maurice, how many years is a scheduled dry dock? Is it every five years? About that. Uh, uh, Maurice, it's not uncommon for a brand-new cruise ship that just got launched they might go in for a quick dry dock in the second or third year for like one week, very quick. Um, a lot of cosmetic work, because some carpeting, um, minor. Uh, then five years later, it'll go in for a uh, two week refurbishment. That's, you know, 50 million. Um, and then five years after that, it goes in for its first major refurbishment. So the schedule can be five years, the first five years it's minor, the next five years it's major, then it's minor, then it's major unless something breaks down in the meantime that requires the ship to go in sooner than scheduled, like an azopod issue, propulsion issue, uh, venting issues, uh, you know, the chillers are down, whatever it can be. Now, there's times where cruise ships get repaired uh, before dry dock. They'll get, they'll get brought in uh, for a, from a cruise, uh, like the Carnival Miracle. I was in Tampa last weekend, and it stayed two days before it left. And all passengers who are on a one-week cruise were told, you're on a five-day cruise. You can get a full refund if you want, or we'll give you a partial refund for the two days you're missing. You can come on the ship on Sunday as, as you expect it to. Come on in. We'll put you on the ship. We'll feed you. Enjoy all the amenities. Everything's running. But the ship isn't going anywhere until Tuesday evening, and that's what happened last night. Uh, they had an issue. They repaired it. It didn't have to go into, quote, full dry dock. They could repair it at the port on site. but. They had a 48-hour delay, and that can happen as well. Uh, let's see here. Debbie is here. Debbie Gavassi. Hi, Debbie. Carnival Victory was recently refurbished. I must have taken 800 photos. She was beautiful. One of our favorite cruises now. That is fantastic. Uh, when they do it right, Debbie, it is fantastic. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you know, you'll be able to cruise that ship now and enjoy the new uh, amenities, and everything's freshened up. Uh, thanks for joining my channel. If you're new, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Steam and Bean, uh, you assumed right the panorama. Yes, sir, it is the panorama, the brand new one, right? Sylvia, hi, Bruce. I had to subscribe to your channel again. Are you monetized? <laughs> 79 Cloudy, Sylvia Greensboro. Um, I, I am not monetized yet, my darling. I, uh, I am sorry to say, I'm frustrated to say that I still am not monetized. I haven't been paid by YouTube since February the 20th. I've been on my own begging for help from wherever I can get it, and I've had a number of you folks help me out with uh, donations and purchases of swag, and uh, now the Amazon link, and I appreciate all of you for that. Uh, Sylvia, the shirt you have on is nice, partial to gray, Sylvia saying. Uh, thank you. Uh, many, many logos available on this kind of shirt, all you want. That's fabulous. 
uh, Cool Jazz got stuck during Irene. I think it was only uh, I think it was only New York came back Sunday, got off the ship Monday. Also stuck in Miami port, got closed. Folks were sick. Wow, yeah, it uh, that uh, the uh, Hurricane Irene, uh, nasty. Yeah, that that can be nasty. I know a number of cruise ships were supposed to come back to Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And they couldn't. Uh, the, the ports were closed. They, they shut them down. So the, the cruise ships hung out in the Atlantic. Some of the cruise ships were uh, in the Western Caribbean, were supposed to come back. They stayed in the Western Caribbean. They went to Cozumel, and uh, they either ported overnight there uh, or two, or they just uh, circled, uh, just did circles in the Gulf of Mexico in nice, calm, warm waters. And the passengers got two extra nights for free. It's not like they could take them to uh, Miami anyway. If they got to Miami, the airport was closed. You're not flying home. You want to sit in an airport terminal like this for two days? Or do you want to be on a cruise ship in the middle of the Caribbean Sea for free? And drinks, I think, were, uh, I'm not sure if they were free or not, but, uh, you know, have some drinks. And the meals were free. The entertainment was free. The weather was gorgeous. Uh, relax and enjoy. And then when all was given, the green light, the all clear was given, the ship went back to its port. Got the passengers off. By the time they got off the ships, the airports were open, and they could get get home. So uh, nothing wrong with that, uh, really. Uh, that's I, I wouldn't mind a deal like that. Steamy mean, I still want to order a speedo with Bruce's image. Yes, he wants he wants that face on a pair of speedos. I wonder if maybe one on one on one cheek and one on the other. Maybe you know, like like a profile shot. Like you know, I'm kind of like on like that, and then I'm going like like that. You could have one on you know, and I could be looking at myself. You know. <laughs> Or looking out. <laughs> oh, the imagery. Ah, oh, if only we knew. Uh, Steamer, uh, you've you've told us you're one biscuit short of one milestone in the weight scale. Uh, I think a pair of speedos with my mug on, I think my face would be all blown out of proportion. I don't know. <laughs> They'll go, who is that guy? Uh, either he's looking good or he's not looking good. <laughs> uh, Oh my goodness. Uh, Desi Wagner, Steam and Bean. I'm looking at the Panorama 2, November 2020. Uh, Heather Young, hi, Bruce, and everyone. 82 in Kentucky. It's been a rainy day here. Oh my goodness, Heather. Yeah, uh, getting those weather systems out of there. Hopefully they're gone soon. Valen Martinez is here from Argentina. How you doing, buddy? Welcome back to my channel. Steam and Bean, Panorama will be a great, uh, will be a great ship, but also tempted with uh, longer cruises. Sea Keeper, I truly enjoy rough seas. I hope for a good storm every time I board a ship. Just about the worst I get most times are three-foot waves. I like to see waves in my beverage glasses and <laughs> sick land lovers. <laughs> oh, the compassion is just overwhelming. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I don't. I not me, Sea Keeper. I like those smooth seas. Mind you, I, nowadays a twenty foot wave doesn't bother me anymore because I suffered through the forty to fifty footers and the hundred mile an hour winds on the um, Explorer of the Seas. But once you've done that, twenty foot waves are nothing. Uh, <laughs> Steam and Bean. I turned fifty last September. I'm due for a dry dock. There you go. <laughs> I hear ya. I've had me. I've had me one of those, Maurice. Uh, uh, yeah, I enjoyed rough seas too, uh, Maurice, but I don't like turbulence on planes. Ah, there you go. Uh, Steam and Bean. I would love to be on a ship for that. Uh, uh, that for some reason, I'd like to be on a ship that for some reason has that has passengers have to stay like four extra days. I would love that. Yeah, you know, you, you're on a seven day cruise. It turns into an eleven day cruise. Hey, uh, you know, if you got to rough it, you got to rough it. Uh, boy, I, I don't think I'd mind it either. Steam and Bean, Sea Keeper. I love a good storm. Once uh, I lose my cookies or biscuits, I recover quickly. <laughs> They'll make you more biscuits. Don't you worry, folks. Uh, Iskew Park, hi, Bruce. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's plus 15 Celsius, but raining heavily here. Hi, fellow summers. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, let's move on the list of ships going in for refurbishment. Um, Crystal Cruises announced that uh, in October, November, the Serenity is going in. They're going to replace, uh, they're going to take their smaller uh, penthouse suites and they're going to replace them with 36 new penthouse suites and two larger penthouse type suites. Uh, they're going to reduce capacity from 1,070 to 980. That's a rarity in the cruise business. Normally, cruise ships do refurbishments or they go into major dry dock and they add rooms. They generally don't take away 
um, capacity, they add capacity. Where this ship is going to go down to 980 passengers from 1,070, I think their game plan is bigger rooms, more uh, higher rent, much higher rent per night per room than we were getting before, um, and uh, we'll do just we'll do just fine. We'll be able to charge more for the cruise overall because the cruise to staff ratio will go up uh, for the staff ratio. It'll be a higher, uh, even better service. Interesting, uh, interesting thoughts uh, there. Cool jazz. I had a ship that listed. wasn't funny. Stuff going everywhere. It was scary. Yeah, when it when it lists unexpectedly in a calm sea, that's not a good thing. Uh, yeah, that uh, the captains don't like it when that happens. Seakeeper, there is a trick to avoid seasickness. Eat, drink, eat some more, drink and be merry. Works every time. For, forget green apples and saltines. Find your favorite food and pig out and enjoy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. Whatever works for you, works for you. As Demi Bean, the only time I got sick, I was on a fishing boat, 1985-86 in Oswego, New York. Oh, man. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Hall in America, here are their, his, their schedule coming up for refurbishments. Um, the Zandam has already been done. The Amsterdam is being done now. Uh, in Maz, the Maz Dam in September, the Noor Dam in September as well. The improvements that they're doing in general uh, include uh, they are adding quartz, topped desks, nightstands, dressers, and night tables to these uh, to these rooms, all the cabins, and then upgrades for electronics. For some of the uh, for most of the cabins, they're upgrading. We're going to add USB ports in the headboards in the beds headboard. Uh, they're looking to add LED LED reading lamps. Uh, and lighted closet rods. Kind of cool. Um, so if you open the closet door or slide it open, your your rod will be lit and you'll be able to see your clothing. And that's kind of cool. Uh, in the suites uh, on Hall in America, they're looking to uh, add uh, free on-demand movies uh, in their new electronics packages. Uh, In-cabin coffee and espresso machines are going to be standard in all the suites so if you want an espresso, you don't have to go to the espresso bar. You can just make yourself one in your room. Uh, and they're going to add a, a, a pair of binoculars that you can use on the cruise inside your suite. Now, I'm assuming that if you leave the ship and the binoculars are gone, they'll charge you for them. But uh, while you're on board, you're welcome to use your binoculars in your suites on all America ships. Great idea. I always bring my binoculars with me. Uh, they're like $50 binoculars, cheapo. I bought them, gosh, over a decade ago, and I've taken them on every cruise, and it's fantastic. I just I uh, just love having my binoculars with me. I love walking the upper decks and then looking out over the ocean while we're at sea, or uh, we're, even when we're in port, or coming in or leaving port, especially leaving port at sunset time. Oh, my gosh. You, can, you look back at the shore that you've just left behind, or you're looking down the coast this way, you're looking down the coast that way with your binoculars, all the passengers around you are just standing there with their, you know, just looking like this, you know, you're looking through binoculars. I see stuff they don't see. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. I'm, I just love it when I have my binoculars on a cruise. Absolutely. Especially when the whales are, um, are, are uh, breaching near Cabo San Lucas, uh, there are dolphins in the water or, or just, you know, whatever. You see another ship off in the distance. You can want, look at it and go, oh, that's a container ship. Or you're looking off in the distance. You see something. You go, what is that? And you realize, oh, that's a ship way down there. With the naked eye, you look and you can't see it. No one else on board with you knows other than those who have the binoculars. And, of course, the guys in the bridge, they know what's going on. Quite an interesting experience to have your binoculars with you. Um, let's see. Peter Heckema, Cr Crystal Cruise are five star plus the bigger the rooms the bigger the bucks you got it buddy uh it is uh first rate cruise line absolutely maurice how come they have wedding chapels on ships and then and then when they go into dry dock they get rid of it do you think they should just leave it alone um maurice um the the uh, wedding chapels are being replaced um for a couple of reasons um but the big one, uh, and, and I'll, I'll be upfront with you, the biggest reason they're replacing them is because a lot of the cruise lines now, uh, the majors I'm talking about, uh, Carnival and all the subsidiary lines, uh, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian, it, it'll come back to me. Uh, they have private islands and private resorts now in the Caribbean that they've set up. 
and they're going to set up more of these worldwide. And they're going to now offer the perfect wedding package on, on let's say, Coco K or, uh, uh, or um, the one in Labadee or, you know, wherever the, these islands are, uh, these private resorts. The cruise lines are now offering wedding packages that are an all-inclusive deal. So, you know, you get uh, 20, 20 people are coming on the cruise and the bride and the groom and uh, you're looking for 11 cabins and you've got, uh, you're going to have the entertainment from the ship that's going to be brought on shore. you got the, the ship staff to handle the catering. you got the, the kitchens on board the ship to handle the food and the catering. The bar is going to be handled and this wedding is going to take place on, on land in the Caribbean on a tropical island. And if you want the if you want the formal ceremony to be held right at the beach and the reception inside the pavilion, perfect. If you want the whole thing to happen on the beach with just cabanas, perfect. You tell us what you want. You tell us what you want. And brides and grooms are looking at these uh, packages, um, and they're going, "We why get married on on the ship in a in a tiny little chapel up there when we can get married, uh, you know, on land and we can have a, a we can have the a, 20, 30 minute ceremony, and then have a two hour, three hour reception and have ourselves a great time. And then when it's all over, onto the ship we go and, uh, and continue on with the rest of the cruise. So that's why chapels, I believe, are being replaced with uh, uh, kids' play areas, uh, um, um, uh, the, new, the new virtual reality glasses uh, sensation centers. That's a big thing coming now. Uh, they need the space for. Um, uh, for activities that will make them more money, number one. And since they have the space on their private resorts now, they can conduct bigger, more elaborate weddings here. Now, if you just want to have a, you know, a calm, quiet beach wedding with the bride and the groom, a best man and a, and a maid of honor, and that's it, they'll set you up for that. If you want one for eight people or 12 or whatever, you tell me the size of the party. We'll take care of it for you, and that's what they'll that's what they'll do. That's that's why this is going on, as far as, as far as I see it. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I've seen some comments here. Uh, but Stephen B, we don't need no stinking chapels. Laugh out loud, Marisa. Who decides what goes and what stays during dry dock? Uh, Maurice, it's all pre-planned. It's all pre-planned, uh, if not a year or two in advance, way in advance. This is a huge military precision deal that has been planned to the last minute, if possible. And the captain uh, has his wish list. The hotel manager has his wish list. The restaurant managers, the bar managers, the entertainment managers. And then there's head office. And... Um, for example, we just had a, a major refurbishment done uh, uh, for Royal Caribbean, uh, the Independence of the Seas. I'm just looking at my notes. The Independence of the Seas just came out of dry dock a couple weeks ago, 100 million bucks. That refurbishment, dry dock, that was planned in the last two years. And uh, all the uh, the uh, machinery needed, all the new machinery, like the, the, water, the water slides, they put in a twin tube water slides. Uh, I think 300 feet long, each one, if I recall, uh, with all the pumping equipment, all the support structures, all the stra struts, I mean, everything. To, to little, it was all pre-made off-site months ago. It was all measured to within an eighth of an inch of accuracy to fit the ship. And when the ship was in dry dock, they picked the day that, that those water slides were going to be installed. But the first day or two on dry dock was to strip the deck of all of its old decking, get everything off the old deck, whatever was in, wherever the, 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 whatever was in place where those water slides are going now, removed, and the deck refurbished and recoded re and everything else. Then they brought in the, uh, the slides. They had already done the wiring work. It was all pre-done. The plumbing is being installed. I mean, it's 24-7. The cranes are coming in. The trucks are coming in. And for the cabins to understand the logistics of it, you're looking at uh, the independence of the seas with up to 3,000 plus passengers. You're talking about 1,200 cabins. If they've decided to replace the televisions in 1,200 cabins, uh, they've already ordered 
all the wiring, all the sets, the remotes, everything was well long ago ordered, already waiting in warehouses. Uh, and each box is labeled what room it is. It's 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 they already know this television goes into eleven nine oh four. This one goes into 905, and they're all boxed, ready to go. And uh, there are uh, technicians waiting on these floors. Uh, you know, here come the crit, the, the containers, the, the huge, you know, the back of a truck uh, container. They're dropping it on the deck, open her up, and then out come the boxes with an army of guys and girls to carry them into the rooms. And out come the old televisions, in go the new televisions and the old televisions and the wiring and everything into the box that the new TV came from and off the ship and back to that container. And now you fill that container up with all the old components and lift her right up and get her out. This is being done on every room for everything. So new mattresses, um, they might decide that uh, we want to replace the night tables. We might want to, re like in the case of Hall America, we want to refurbish all the night tables on the ship, we know exactly how to take the tops off, and we're going to put a brand new uh, quartz stone top on every one of them. It's thousands. It's it's just an amazing system. Then there's the work done below deck in the crew quarters, in the engineering department, the electrical department, the uh, air, air conditioning, the refrigeration, the kitchens, the new equipment out with the old dishwashers, in with brand new ones, may, way more energy efficient. Um, you know, they might be larger, they might be the same size, there might be instead of 14, there might be 12 of them. The logistics have all been worked out. They've already had technicians on the ships for months prior to getting to dry dock while we're lounging on the deck, enjoying the sunshine, and I'm in the steam bath having my steam bath. There are guys all over the place, men and women engineers, measuring out the refurbishment of this ship next year. And they're taking it all back to their engineering departments and to their subcontractors and getting everything ready. So when that ship pulls into dry dock, there are warehouses all around that uh, dock filled with everything new that's going on the ship. And they're just waiting to take stuff off, get stuff on and replaced. It is a military deal. Quite amazing. I would love to see a behind the scenes video of something like that. Uh, that would be quite a uh, quite a show because what I see on television is just snippets, just tiniest of snippets of work. You don't get to see the real nuts and bolts of it, but it is an amazing job. Um, Wes Morrison, the only time I got seasick was on a small boat leaving uh, Mombasa, Kenya, to get back to the aircraft carrier. How about that? Um, uh, let's see here. Thomas Henry, thanks, Bruce. Uh, Star Trek medallion, just opening mail, accumulated while on my cruise, a bit behind. I've been sick for two and a half weeks. Oh, Thomas, hang in there, buddy. And I'm glad you got the uh, medallion. Fantastic. Randy Lucas, I'm here. I'm here. Got busy changing the oil in the motorcycle. <laughs> He's got the big ass RV. He's got the big ass motorbike. And he goes on back to back to back cruises. I love this guy. Uh, Randy, welcome back, buddy. Uh, you caught us here. Uh, tra Tracy Dunlop, I don't know who would want to get married in a chapel anyway on a ship. I would think you'd want to be out on the, on deck or on a private island. There, there you go. Uh, Thomas Henry, uh, and best of all, I have your address to send Costco gift cards. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. I've added my address as well. My mailing address, some of you were asking about it. I've added a mailing address in the description of all the videos on the bottom of this. So if you're watching a rerun here tonight, uh, down below, you'll now have uh, my email address, my mailing address, uh, and my Amazon uh, affiliate link so that you can go to Amazon and uh, buy anything you want, and I end up getting some binders fees. And there's also the link to or the address of my uh, store, Redbubble store, for my merchandise, and you can help yourself with that too. So there you go. Uh, uh, Thomas Henry, if you're sending me gift cards from Costco, I'm a happy guy. Uh, believe me, I'd be, I would love that. Thank you so much. Uh, any of you folks want to send me a postcard uh, from where you are, uh, by all means, I'd love that. I'm going to start posting them right back here. I'll just stick them up on the wall here, and we'll see uh, where all these folks are, you folks are watching me from. Thomas Henry, Randy, how's the roof coming? <laughs> yeah, well, everybody. Maurice, does the crew stay on during dry dock, or do they go off? It depends. Um, if the ship is only in for a week, uh, chances are a good bunch of them are still on the ship, a big bunch of them. Um, if the ship is in for a major four week dry dock or longer, um, there may only be a handful of people still on the ship. 
Um, a bunch of them might be put up in local hotels, or it may well be that the contracts are such that the entire crew, all the room staff and these folks, they may be on a, uh, a, uh, a contract where they're heading home and then they come back and when they come back, they're coming to the ship just as it's getting ready to come out of dry dock and they're working like crazy the last three, four days to clean it all up before they pull out. Um, it varies. It really varies. Um, it's uh, quite amazing. Uh, Randy Lucas, uh, TH, going good, hopefully done tomorrow on the roof. Cam Wilson's, uh, they stay on and help for the most part, Maurice. Debbie uh, is saying Mariner uh, OTS, uh, uh, Mariner of the Seas, is also having the same changes as Independence. It's in dry dock now for like a month. We're going. We're looking forward to going on Mariner in September. Right on, uh, Tracy Dunlop. Sorry you got sick after your cruise, Thomas. Uh, Tracy's feeling for you. Uh, Orla Cam from uh, Randy. Jim Thomas. Uh, hey Randy Cam, and of course Deb. Randy Lucas. Uh, but Bruce, I thought that uh, back wall reserve for the spider. Well, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, how big does a spider have to be? I mean, you know, I mean, if it's as big as my hand, I mean, there's room for the spider and cards. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> we don't have spiders that big, guy. I mean, come on, geez, Randy, you're scaring me. See, keeper, the spider will live among the postcards. Spiders live a place. <laughs> live a place. Spiders need a place to live too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mercy of being shown to the poor spider. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. What can I say? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, uh, I was trying to figure out uh, what, sh what should I do about, uh, should I send you guys postcards? I was wondering, should I do a, a, a little promo to send you guys a postcard from Creston, British Columbia? Would, would any of you like one? Uh, and then I thought, well, you know, can I tie it in with some kind of a fundraising campaign or something? What should I do? Um, I, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. But if any of you folks want to send me a postcard, the address now is in my description below this channel, before below this video, and uh, send me whatever you want. Somebody wants to send me golf clubs. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, who else have we got? Oh, Norwegian Cruise Line. They're in. They've got the Jewel going in in October. They've already done the Star. They've done the Sun. Uh, we were talked about that. Princess Cruise Lines uh, got a bunch of ships going in. They're. Um, they've just finished the Crown Princess. Uh, the Golden Princess is scheduled for 2020. The Ruby Princess, the one that I was on last year, it's going in September of this year. And the the uh, Sun Princess is going in June of this year. And then for our friends at Royal Caribbean, uh, Mariner of the Seas is being done right now. Uh, Independence of the Seas just got finished um, like la in the last month or so. Oasis of the Seas is going in in 2019. Navigator is going in on uh, in 2019. The uh, the uh, Freedom of the Seas is going in in 2020. Allure of the Seas for 2020 and Liberty of the Seas for 2021. So Royal Caribbean is already announcing the dates, the years that these ships are going in. And I can tell you right now that uh, what's being done to uh, uh, the Oasis of the Seas in 2019, everything's already been ordered for the Oasis for 2019. It's being built. It's being uh, the procured. The entire contract for the Oasis is being done right now for delivery on a certain date at a certain dry dock by certain date in 2019. And when that ship pulls in there, there will be thousands of workers ready to pounce on that cruise ship and get her done as quick as humanly possible. Uh, I can't imagine the Oasis would be in for more than two weeks, maybe three. I don't even know if they need that long. Um, because it's uh, it's not a ten year old ship, but it's you know it's starting to show, and it'll be time to get her done. So, the, the, like I say, with the uh, with the Navigator of Freedom, the Allure Allure is another Oasis class size ship. Uh, there will be those will be major jobs because of the sheer size and number of cabins we're talking about. And if you compare the Symphony of the Seas now to the Oasis and the Allure of the Seas. Those two ships look old compared to the Symphony of the Seas with all the new bells and whistles. So they got to bring these two ships up to the symphony kind of level if they can, as far as they can. Um, and it's going to cost 50 to 100 million bucks to do it. It's just incredible how much money is being spent. Uh, sea, keeper, sea Keeper saying, hey, we saw that spider all the way to Florida. Gregory, did you say NCL Pearl? Nope, I said NCL Jewel, not the Pearl. 
Uh, Gregory is uh, it's coming to Tampa in 2019, and if getting upgrade before that will be great. Uh, did you say per oh, uh, the Pearl? Uh, I don't know if it'll be upgraded between now and then, but we'll see if uh, Norwegian makes announcements. At this point, all I have is up till October of this year for uh, for Norwegian Cruise Line um, <coughs> refurbishments and upgrades. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll have to see what uh, what comes. But anyway, that's a brief list there. Uh, with the major lines uh, uh, highlighted, uh, what refurbishments are being done? Um, and like I say, every day in dry dock, three million bucks average is the amount of money they're spending per 24 hours to refurbish a cruise ship. So they do not want to waste any time at all. Every day that that ship is uh, taking is three million bucks cost, and cruise lines don't like blowing it with a they cannot afford to blow the schedule because if a cruise ship says, cruise line says, well, it's in from July 10th to July 20th, they're booking passengers on the 21st. Uh, so they're not going to uh, want to start canceling cruises from the 21st to the 28th because they were late or behind on their dry dock. And this is why if you book a cruise the first week after a ship comes out of dry dock, it is more often than not, you may find workers still on that cruise ship in various areas of the ship. Now, lately, with all the bad press that Norwegian's been getting on the sun, um, the cruise lines are desperately trying to work it out so that the work that is done on the decks where passengers are present gets done at all costs. And work below decks might be cosmetic, it might be plumbing or whatever. If they can run the ship and repair, do those repairs in the week after dry dock, so be it. But the passengers won't know about it, they won't see it, they won't experience it, is the plan. But a perfect dry dock is when a ship pulls out and it's all completed and she's all spick and span, she looks brand new, and the captain is smiling, the hotel director is smiling, the casino operators. They're smiling, the entertainment directors, the dancers, the singers, the magicians, the comics, they're all happy because it's all done. The lighting's in place. The microphones are brand new. The stage has been resurfaced. Whatever has to be done, the seats in the theater have but all been refurbished or replaced. Uh, this is a big, big deal. And uh, cruise lines really want dry docks to be effective and competitive the ships to be complete when they when they leave dry dock if there are contractors that are late and not getting the job done on time there are financial penalties charged to the contractors for being late on a repair and the contractors don't want to see that so they got staff 24 7 on that ship in dry dock getting it done at all costs getting it done all right, uh, let's see. And Jordan, hey, Bruce, and all crystal clear reception today. Long live the spider. Laugh out loud. Scott Batchley, is that spider from Tokyo? I may, may have gone to Tokyo. I don't know. He was here or she. I, I don't know. Maybe she laid 100 eggs and uh, I'm going to be overrun by spiders. I don't know. Uh, now you're making me look. Uh, there's, <laughs> But I haven't found any lately. But, uh, you know, Creston, uh, I'm surrounded by agriculture. So, you know, there are critters, uh, insects and others. But, uh, I try not to have any 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 in the house. I, I try to work uh, that deal. We did have some hornets outside, uh, um, the yellow jackets, but my wife got the raid and uh, she waited till sunset. And then Jen went outside. And she sprayed the uh, the nest areas uh, just as the sun was setting. And uh, the next morning, I took a walk on the deck, and uh, all kinds of yellow jackets are, just aren't moving anymore. And uh, we're not being bothered by yellow jackets anymore. So it's all good there. We have enough of them in the, in the neighborhood. We, uh, we don't want any at the house. <laughs> there you go. Well, there is our uh, story for the day. Uh, ships coming in for refurbishments. That's my uh, my shtick today. If you have any other questions, by all means, fire away. Uh, thank you for thumbs ups today. How many are we doing? Uh, we're sitting on 31 thumbs ups. Thank you. Uh, Steaming Bean keeps bragging and predicting that if we hit 60 thumbs ups on any one telecast, I take my shirt off. I haven't agreed to that deal, but he keeps talking about it. Uh, but I think I'm in, I'm in not in any danger. I'm only at 31 thumbs up. So once we get into the mid fifties, I'm going to relax unless we hit the mid fifties, like in five minutes. Uh, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> 
and I want to thank uh, the good folks at uh, La Lita Loca last night. I said hi to them on their show. They were on live last night, and I said hi to the two of them, and they said hi back, and they put the word out to their viewers. Hey, you got to check out Bruce on Traveling with Bruce. He's on live uh, six days a week, and it was awful kind of them to do that, and I thank them very much. I've invited them to join me on a telecast. They have accepted. Uh, we're just going to work out the logistics, and uh, hopefully I can get both of them on the air or one of them, and uh, we'll have a chat on the air, and uh, you guys can pipe in too. So we'll see if we can pull that one off. Gregory Hartman says 32, now 35. Uh, I'm still safe. I don't have to worry about taking off my shirt. Pamela Jordan, good night. I'll see you next time. See, Pamela's already running. She knows. Uh, Jim Thomas, thanks again, Bruce, for another great show. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Jim. Take care of that knee of yours and work on it. Um, I'm on tomorrow, Thursday, for two shows, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock, and uh, we'll see how uh, how we do with some trivia perhaps tomorrow night uh, and a nice clear picture, I hope, too. Uh, that's what we want. Um, and Jordan, now, uh, 29 now, great show. As always, see you all uh, tomorrow. Uh, Stacy, I, I, I love Lalito uh, and saw you were there last night on the live show. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, I've done that now a couple weeks, and they were asking me when I was on the air and so on. And, yeah, we, we have a good time. They want me to be involved in the uh, Cruise Wars. I think that's a great idea. I love to be on Cruise Wars. Uh, that should be fun. There we go. And Jordan's just talking about it. Debbie Manuel, thanks for the great show. Uh, listening makes uh, time at work even more enjoyable. And so thanks to everyone. Back tomorrow. And yay, trivia. Toodles. See you later, Debbie. Thank you. Tracy Dunlap will be back tomorrow for the show. And then trivia. Think up some good ones. Bruce, Lisa Moore, bye all. Thanks again, everybody. Check out my, uh, my Amazon uh, uh, affiliate link and uh, check out the store. And see if you can find yourself a coffee uh, coffee mug or a travel mug or a T-shirt, whatever you like. And uh, thanks again for watching today. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks to you guys for uh, popping by today. May the 30th, 2018. Another month is almost gone. Unbelievable. Uh, I'm on again tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern and 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. So come on by and say hi. Have a good one in the meantime, guys. And I'm getting ready right now. I'm going to load up a new video in the next half an hour on uh, QNAR. So check this out later tonight. See what you think, uh, and we'll catch you later. Take care, guys. Bye for now.